Hi everyone. After I put the video out where I had put this little journal together on Monday, I got a couple of questions from some new junk journalers and they weren't sure how I added the pages to my cover. So I thought I would do a video just showing how I do the three hole pamphlet stitch. And that way hopefully it will be helpful to the newbies and also maybe some of you who haven't made a journal in a while or so. I've got a box and by the way these are very yummy <laughs> and i've been wanting to make little candy box journals for a while so i thought "Ooh, perfect opportunity i'll just make another journal <laughs> so i'm just going to show you what my process was from start to finish on this one being just a little box and this is a perfect size for a little journal because of the size that it turns out to be a small journal and because the side panels are already small um, you remember I showed you when I was putting this one together, I had to resize the spine area to make it a more narrow spine. So this one has a perfect size spine. But anyway, I'm just going to cut off uh, all the little end tabs. And this is a real simple process. So any of you who have not made a journal and sewn in your pages, you're in for a surprise because it's a very simple simple process I also don't need these little pieces on the sides so those can be cut off as well you can also do this with a paper trimmer if you have that keep it nice and straight but I'm not real concerned about it seeing as how it's just a junk journal it doesn't really matter but this one is um, kind of cuts into the cover just a little bit. This is the area, I guess, where you can pour. Yeah, easy pour dispenser. I didn't use it. I just opened the end of the box when I was getting them out from my, my own consumption. <laughs> but I'm just going to be careful there because it, it is kind of cut into the cover there. They should know better how they think we're going to make a journal if it's got cuts in it. <laughs> okay. All right, so, oh, um, by the way, I just tossed this in the trash, and then I just took it right back out again. This, and this, these are perfect little tabs, little things to staple onto your pages in your Christmas journal. So, don't toss them. Use them. That's, that's embellishments, free embellishments right there. <laughs> okay, so now... After having cut all those little panels off, I've got a cute little journal cover. All right, and then I've got this piece of scrapbook paper, and I'm going to add that to the inside. You don't have to cover the inside of your journal if you don't want to. And that's the beauty of journal making. You can do whatever you want to do. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. Also, a couple of people asked me about this ginormous glue stick. I like this for large areas, um, for gluing large areas. I got this at... Amazon and I have it in my Amazon store if anybody's interested in it and Some coffee So right here these areas where the little cuts are will be covered up by this paper So it should it should be okay. I might put a tiny bit of tape there too just to be on the safe side to keep it from wearing over time, you know because there's already a little cut there I'm going to put a little piece of washi tape there. That's just to give it a little bit of extra support there. All right, and then I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to turn this over and lay it this way. You can do all sorts of cute things to your cover. You could sew around the edges and decorate it if you want to on the cover, but I'm going to leave mine as a plain candy box. I'm going to put my ruler in here on the crease and just kind of crease it against the ruler where those folds are just to kind of hold it down. Good. 
you know, I can see a little spot right here that I didn't get enough glue. Okay, when that happens, I will take something like a, um, a palette knife or anything flat like this that's pretty thin, and I will just put a little glue on it. I usually put it on the top and the bottom. Not real thick and globby either, just a little bit. And then I'll just slide it up into that area and press, and then move the palette knife around and slide it out. And that way, it will insert some glue up in there, and everything's fixed. There we go. So, we're ready to add our pages. Before I do that, though, let me also answer another question. Somebody wanted to know what size my journal was. And it is five and a quarter by six and a half inches. And then the spine is half an inch. I have to say, I am so excited by the response from the video. You guys are so excited to try making your own journal. And that just thrills me to pieces because a lot of you already know this, but that's the very reason why I make videos is so that other people can hopefully be inspired to, to do it as well. And so when people tell me how inspired they are to create something that they've seen me creating, that just blesses my heart, let me tell you. So thank you so much for the feedback, and I'm tickled beyond words <laughs> to know that you all are inspired to uh, make a little journal like this. All right, so here's what I did. I grabbed some papers, any old papers. These are all just random book papers, notepad papers. Here's a piece of ledger paper, music paper, more notepad paper, more book papers. Yes, that's all it is. What you do is you take your, your pages and fold them in half. Sometimes I folded more than once. Like this one I folded, but I also folded this, so I'll have a little flip out on my page. So once you get your pages folded, you put them together in any way that is pleasing to you. So like you can see how all these are different shades, different colors, and so I'm kind of mixing that up a little bit. And just setting one page inside the other. And once you get your pages like this, where there's a fold in the middle, all those pages together make what is called a signature. So when you hear people talking about a signature in their journal, they're talking about a group of folded pages. So this right here is one signature. And so sometimes a journal will have one of these. Sometimes a journal will have more than one. It may have two, three, four signatures. In this case, I'm just going to make the one signature for this little journal. And then get your pages lined up whatever way you like them. They can all be stacked together at the bottom, you know, where everything's even at the bottom. Or you can have them all staggered. I prefer to stagger them because it just makes it a little bit more interesting when you're playing in your journal and going through it. I like it to be all staggered and kind of a mish, mishmash. Okay, it's important right here to clip your pages together. You can sew them in without clipping them together, but it's it's very helpful to have them clipped so that they won't move because you're going to be punching a hole, and so you want the hole to stay in the same place through all of your pages, and if you, if one page is, you know, was to slip, then your holes aren't going to line up anymore, and it's going to be really difficult to sew it in. So if you do it this way, it's it makes it very simple. So I just clipped one side and then the other, and the whole time I'm making sure that all of the uh, page folds are down in there tight together. So sometimes your cover might just be a folded piece like this, so it doesn't have really a, a wide spine. It just has a fold, right, right here. In that case, you can put all of your pages together 
and you can clip them all together, your cover and your pages, and then just punch all the way through the, the signature and the cover. But when you have a, a, a journal that the cover has a little spine on it, it's not as easy to do that. I mean, it can be done. You just have to be real careful. What I do is I just punch the signature first, and then I will come back and punch the cover. So I've got this little tool called an awl. For a three-hole pamphlet stitch, you need three holes. So I start in the middle. You can measure this if you want to, but it's not necessary. I just, most of the time, eyeball it. So I'm just punching a hole right through. And what you want is for the hole to come out on the fold. Because I've got staggered papers, I'm going to do these closer together because I don't want these pages to fall out if they don't get caught. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure they get caught in the thread by just putting the, putting the hole right about here. And then I want to measure roughly the same distance on this end. All right, so now that we know where the holes are in our book, I mean in our signature, I'm going to be sewing it into the center of this spine. It just turns out, <laughs> I didn't plan this, it just turns out that this, this stripe made a line for me right down the center. So I'm going to use that line as the, the area where I'm going to stitch my papers. So I'm just going to take a pin and I'm going to hold my signature next to that line. And you want to get make sure you get your pages, you know, kind of centered on either end. All right. And I think right there is good. So I've got my, I can see where the holes are in my signature. So I'm going to mark the cover right where those holes line up. I'm going to lay it down so it won't slip. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm marking right on that line where I'm going to be sewing. And I'm just lining it right up with each of the holes. Once I have that, then I'm going to get some thread to sew it together with. I'm just using some embroidery floss. You can use any kind of string you want. You just want to make sure that it's sturdy enough to hold your book together. If you use something like sewing thread, it's not going to be heavy duty enough. I typically measure across the height of my book three times, two and a half to three times, whatever. If you want to have a little extra string to play with at the end, you can do three times. I would probably do two and a half. So that's one, two, and about a half. Okay, so I'm going to cut that there. All right, now you don't have to knot your thread or anything like that. And you start in the center. If you want the strings at the end, to tie, a, tie up together in the middle of your book, you start on the inside. You want the strings to be on the outside of your book so that you can tie a little bow or something like that on the outside. You can start on the outside going through. I'm just going to start from the inside. That's mostly the way I do that. So I put it through the signature and then through the cover. Okay, and pull it through, but not all the way through. If you want to, you can slide the end of the thread up underneath the paper clip, and that way it won't pull out, or well, not as easily anyway. All right, so, um, yeah, thought something was wrong here. I've got, the, I've got my cover turned around the wrong way. My signature is right, but my cover is wrong. My holes were not lining up. That's how I knew something was off. Okay. So I'm turning my cover around, so I've got right side up on both. And I'm going again through the signature, through the cover. All right. OK. 
Okay, now you can go to the bottom end or the top end. It doesn't matter. It's all going to come out the same when you're done. <laughs> so you go through that hole. And then you also need to pick up the hole in the signature and push it through. Okay, and then gently pull your thread. All right, and then this time we're going to skip the middle hole and we're going to go down to the other end. Put it through the signature and then through the cover. All right now, the very last stitch comes back up through the middle. I gotta tighten that up a little bit. There we go. All right, so the very last stitch goes back down through the center hole right here. And you wanna do this without. Putting the needle through that thread that's already in there. Because if you if you split that thread and go through it, it, you're not going to be able to tighten up your strings at the end. Okay, so I'm going through the cover and through the signature in the middle. Okay, here we go. Now what you want to end up with uh, is both ends of your string, one on either side of this middle one. If, they, if it comes out that they're both on one side, just slide one of them underneath that middle string. All right, I'm going to adjust this thread just a little bit so that I have a little bit more of a tail here because I ended up with a shorter, um, a shorter amount than I wanted. There we go. All right. So all I'm doing, all I'm going to do now is just tighten this up gently. Don't go overboard. Okay. Make sure that these stitches are nice and straight and taut. Make sure they're flat on the spine. All right. And then what you do is take the thread in your right hand and put it over the thread in your left hand. You've probably heard this before. Right over left, left over right. I'm going to show you. The way to tie a square knot that should not come untied. So you've got a thread in your right hand and a thread in your left hand. You put the right over the left and through the loop. Pull it. Then you put the left over the right one. Put it through the loop. Can't grab it. Put it through the loop and pull it. And that's a square knot and it won't come untied. And I'm going to just, um, I'm going to just cut this one short. I don't really need it for anything special. All right, so now you can remove your clips from your signature. And you have a journal with your pages sewn in. It's just as simple as that. Now, if you do want to have any like machine sewing on your pages, it's best to do that before you sew them into your signature because it's hard to get a little page like this under the machine and try to, you know, sew it and do all that without ripping your, your page or your books. Isn't that fun? Just a bunch of different little pages and all of them just waiting for something fun to be added to them. <laughs> I took my catalog that I was taking some images out of the other day uh, for that for that video when I was working in this book. And uh, I took that same catalog and cut out some little tiny squares. I love to take magazines and catalogs. And by the way, this is just a real thin strip of note paper. You can also use tracing paper. You can use deli paper. Or magazine paper you know anything that's relatively thin to glue these things down on but I just cut some bits from the catalog of course it was a Christmas catalog right 
So it had all these little Christmassy kind of images. I just put a little glue on my thin strip and I just placed my little squares like this. And I'm just laying them kind of wonky and haphazard. So I have all of these little squares and then I like to take it to my sewing machine and just run, run some stitching right down the middle. All right, so here it is, my little strip, got little zigzag stitching right down the center. And I like to use these as a little edge on some of my pages. So I think I'm going to put this uh, part of this right on the edge of this page right here. So I just need to trim off a little bit right here. I'm just going to stick this down right on the edge. Like that. Make sure I'm not gluing two pages together or anything. I'm just going to press it. You can do these with any kind of scraps. Your painted paper scraps your scrapbook papers, your gift wraps, you know, scraps, magazine and catalog images, fabrics. You can make these with all kinds of scraps and they just make an adorable little page border. I think I want to put one of these, at least one of these, maybe, maybe I'll do this red one. This would look so cute there. Here's a good little spot because that's a short page anyway. I like that. Let's put a little bit of glue on there and stick it down. <laughs> I have a little stocking. That's a sequin material. I'm going to see if I can staple that right there on that end. See if we can make it work. Yep. Pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. So you guys can see you just start decorating and um, putting in your little bits and pieces like Here's a little green star clip. You know, the fun just begins. You start just putting in anything you can pick up and find that would go in, you know, that could go in. And almost anything could go in, a little Christmas journal. You've got all kind of Christmas products that you use throughout the holiday season, candy wrappers and snacks and, I mean, all kinds of things you can put in a Christmas journal. So anyway, we have a little start. I think it's just adorable and I'm already in love with my little, <laughs> my little scrap border. I love that. Okay, guys. So I hope that you found, found that helpful. And if you really are going to be making one of these journals, I'd love to hear about it because it just tickles me to death. So have fun, happy creating and happy holidays. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.